Hello, this is Dan Lemke with the Vision Group. This is the second in a series of articles regarding the concerns that buyers have as they move through buying decisions and what we do to help them make a good buying decision. We'll take a consultative view today. In this slide, let's define the things that buyers get concerned about as they make a buying decision. On this diagram, you'll notice there are four phases described. Phase zero, being unaware of doing anything. Phase one is discovering or getting a vision of doing something. Phase two is evaluating and getting proof they can get what they want to meet their needs. And phase three is risk or commitment. On the y-axis is a level of the individual's concern about certain areas, and on the x-axis is the timeline of the individual's decision cycle. A decision cycle could be a week, could be a month, could be a year, or multiple years. All of this information is based on the research of the Huthwaite Group. If you notice, there are four things buyers become concerned about. The first is the needs they've got. Number two is the cost of getting a solution or meeting their needs. Number three is what is the solution or set of things they need in order to meet their needs. And the last thing they worry about is the risk of making a decision to buy a set of solutions and potentially to buy from any company. Notice on this diagram that we're in phase zero and the buyer is not aware of doing anything. So how do they become aware? Well, demand generation programs that you and I as suppliers put on can cause a buyer to become aware they may want to meet a need or a set of new needs. So they may move from latent need into actively pursuing understanding what they could do differently. If you notice here, then there are a list of demand generation programs. Another way a buyer or buyers can begin to evaluate outside solutions or even internal solutions is a self-generated type of vision. There are people who do in internet searches today, and as a matter of fact, they may have done a lot of research before they even contact us as vendors, or if we contact them, they may know quite a bit about us already if they're actively looking. So being involved in trade shows, the past experiences they've had, uh, if current needs arise and they begin to evaluate what they should do about it, they may be reading blogs, they may be involved in social media such as Twitter or Facebook. There are many ways in which a buyer can become aware that they should consider doing something differently. Once a buyer begins to actively consider doing something differently, the most important thing is what are their needs. Many buyers will begin to evaluate how important is that need. And they may do that in terms of dollars and cents, or it may be blood pressure. They want to understand why they can't meet their needs or what they need to do to overcome their needs or do better jobs. They may even begin to recognize that there's some value in doing something. If they look outside for solutions from people like you and I, they become very concerned about the people they interact with. They will evaluate quickly. Are you sincere? Do you appear to be competent when talking to them about their needs? Are you knowledgeable? They will make decisions on whether they trust you very quickly, and that could be nonverbal. If you work over the telephone, the way in which you talk to them and your voice has a lot to do with how they interact with you and whether they will continue to. They want to know if you can help. So they'll make a, an emotional conclusion, and then they may use logic to decide whether they want to continue to work with you or not. So in phase one, they care about their their needs, but they also begin to care about how much any kind of solution or set of solutions will cost. If you notice in this diagram, their concern about cost drops off in phase two, but it comes to be a very important thing towards the end of their buying process. That's because we know that human nature affords everybody to want to know they got the best deal or they got the best value. So the things they worry about are, first of all, they may want to know early whether or not they can afford to do something with an outside solution. Now, if we just show up and talk about our product details, they may be forced to ask, well, how much is all this going to cost? The only way we know to delay the desire to talk about pricing is for us to talk about their business operations and their business needs. If we focus on their business environment and how we may help the business environment by providing certain kinds of capabilities, the buyer's desire to talk about pricing is delayed. This can keep buyers from becoming cynics. <laughs> Cynics are people who know the price of everything but the value of nothing. 
So buyers want to get a vision of what they should do, and hopefully there'll be value in that vision by the end of what we call phase one. That means they've had discussions with people like us, or we may have even found them to have those discussions. In phase two, they care about the product. They care about making sure that it will do what they need it to do. And they will also try to determine if there's any value in doing anything. During that phase, they may in fact want to understand final pricing, talk to people, get reference stories, they want to get contract finalization, statements of work if you're in the professional services business, they may want to talk about implementation details, they may have to do value justification, and they may want a final proposal. Phase two can last for weeks or months depending on the complexity of the decision cycle. So as the buyer moves through phase two, they want all kinds of proof and they do all kinds of evaluation. If it's a competitive opportunity for us, they may be talking to other people either at the same time in phase two or they may like us and work with us until at some point in phase two they know they need to get some other bids or some other people involved. That's very common. But as they move towards the end of phase two, they move into what I call the caution phase or some people call it the valley of death. This is where they begin to reevaluate the risk of buying a solution or set of solutions and they assess the risk of buying from certain companies. If we've done a good job of understanding what those areas of concern may be and we've successfully addressed those in phase one and phase two, their feeling about risk from buying from us may not be very high. This is also a time when they may go quiet. They may talk about getting the best price. It could be that's a false negotiating strategy. They might even fabricate discounts that other people are suggesting they can get. This is the time not to misbehave. If we misbehave in this phase, phase two and phase three, such as discounting when it's not needed, we can cause a buyer to hesitate or to potentially not even buy from us. So some final thoughts regarding the shifting concerns of individuals making buying decisions. Number one, if we can help buyers have a clear understanding of needs, number two, if we can help them understand the capabilities or the things we can provide that help them meet their needs, and we can delay that discussion about pricing until they've got a vision that's got value in it, and then help them assess the risk of buying our solution and buying from us and minimize that risk through the decision cycle, we may have a very good chance of being viewed by that buyer as being consultative as well as being helpful. So the final thoughts are, it isn't about us, it's about what the buyer's going through as they make their buying decision. They worry about us in the beginning, they worry about our product and services as they move through time, and in the end they worry about our company. Now, let me ask you this question. If you're making calls on buyers that have multiple decision makers involved, isn't it interesting that everybody you meet has got one of these shifting concerns maps? In our next article, we'll talk about how do we deal with multiple buyers in a complex sales environment, recognizing they've all got their own shifting concerns. Have a great day. Give us a call at visiongroupconsult.com, and we'll talk to you soon.